What's up guys, welcome back to the channel again. If you're new here, make sure you go down and click that subscribe button. And if you're returning, I of course welcome you back. So as of now, you guys have seen that I picked up the new 2017 BMW M4, and I told you guys the first thing I'm gonna focus on is protecting the paint. So the first thing I went and jumped on is I ordered a set of custom Tommy L Garage mud flaps. So that's what we're gonna be putting on the day. With this car, the tires are really wide and with the tires I've got, they're super sticky. So they kick up rocks like crazy. So I wanted to make sure I got some nice mud flaps on there to help protect the sides of the car as well as the rear bumper. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in, show you guys what came included in the package that I got sent over from Tommy L Garage and we'll jump into the install. All right, so to show you guys everything that you need for this install, you've got your mud flaps, which come in with included hardware, which is great. Next, which was more of a suggestion than anything, is an impact wrench with a 17 millimeter so that you can get those lugs taken off because we do have to take off the rear wheel. Um, next, you're gonna use a uh, screwdriver and then some type of needle nose point because you have to push the pins through for the, uh, the pieces that we're gonna be removing. I'm using this little Torx end piece right here just because it was the only thing I could find that was small enough. Next, a hammer just to put in the new ones. And then finally, a torque wrench so that we can torque down the lug bolts when we put the rear wheel back on. But this is pretty much everything that you need. Um, it's super simple and this is gonna be a really quick install and a huge improvement for the car. All right guys, so we're gonna start by installing the front first. And you don't actually need to take the front wheel off, which is great because that's a pain. But for this, all you're gonna need is just a few tools. And you wanna make sure that you turn your wheel all the way to one side so that you can actually access where the mud flap is gonna go. So you want your wheel to kind of look like this. So turn your wheel all the way so that you can access the rear side of the wheel because these are the rivets that we're trying to actually access. And for this, all you're gonna need is your front mud flap a hammer to put the new rivets in, your replacement rivets, your tool to punch through the old, as well as a pry tool to actually pop them out. So these are the only things that we're gonna need for the front. I'll go ahead and set the camera up so that you guys can see the process a little bit more up close. I've got a little handy light here so that should help you guys see visibility wise. So we're gonna be removing these, putting in two new ones, and then the mud flap itself is gonna require one of these, which is the shorter of the screws. We're gonna be using one of these, and that one is gonna actually be screwed into the plastic, which is gonna be somewhere right around here. So let me grab the mud flap so you guys can kind of see. So we wanna make sure first off that we have the logo facing the wheel. That's number one priority, so you make sure you've got it facing the correct way. Um, but it basically, these two rivets right here are gonna line up with these two holes, and then this rivet right here is actually gonna be the one that goes in the plastic. So when you install it, it's gonna be somewhere, let's see, it's gonna be somewhere right around there. So that is how your mud flap is gonna be. And it sticks out, I'll show you guys afterwards, but it sticks out, you know, a good two knuckles on my finger. And that is gonna protect from all those rock chips. They're gonna be kicking up on your quarter panels, on your side skirts, and even all the way back on your rear fenders. They flare out a lot on the M4, so this is really what I'm trying to protect. On the other side, there's actually already a ding there from a rock that was probably kicked up. So I'm really hoping these are gonna improve and help us protect the paint. All right guys, so to punch these rivets out, and this tool is really optional. It really depends on what you have around the house that you can use to actually push these through. But like I said, we're really looking at these pieces right here, and this is the piece of plastic right there if you can see it this piece right here this little stick is actually on there it's inside of these prongs so what we're trying to do is we're trying to push it through so that it pops out the back side it's going to drop right down into here and we shouldn't have to worry about it after that but like i said so these are on here and i'm just going to push those through i'm using this little tiny little torx wrench just because it's small enough to fit in there but you basically push it on the center piece right there so i'm going to push this here All right, so that should have pushed it all the way through. And I've already done this one for the most part. All right, so easy as that. So we just push those through. Now we're gonna take our flathead piece or whatever pry tool you guys wanna use. I always say that if you're gonna do this, put one hand on the paint side. You do not wanna mess up your paint trying to remove these, but they should be super simple because there's nothing really holding them in. So I'm gonna stick this under here. And we're just gonna pop that out and we can almost get it out. Yep, just like I thought with our fingers. All right, so now that those are both two removed and you wanna make sure that you replace those first because that will tell us where we need to put our inline screw. 
So I'm gonna take our new pieces of hardware, which are these two new pins right here, and we're gonna go ahead and install those. Super simple. Once again, face the logo towards the wheel, line up the first one, and we're just gonna push the fat end through first. Okay, see that one's stuck there. And we're gonna do the same thing with the second one. I'm gonna find that hole, push those through like that. Okay, so now that those are in, those are kind of gonna hold our spot and that's gonna tell us exactly where this screw goes. Now there's not a hole for this one, so you do have to push it in. So we're gonna take our hammer next and do this very carefully. But what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna hammer in these pins, which is what expands that plastic on the inside, which is what holds these rivets in place. So just tap these lightly. All right, so you see they're flush, just the same, or, same way that they were before we took the old ones out. Now we're gonna put in our new screw. And like I mentioned, in the bag, there's long screws and the short screws. We're using the short screws. But this is the easier. The back ones are a little bit more difficult. So these front ones are definitely the easier ones. But right behind this is just plastic. You're literally, it's this liner here. You're putting a screw in. And it's really not even needed. I mean, this thing is in and it's not going anywhere. This is simply just for an extra piece to secure it. So you're gonna line this up on the hole and you're just gonna give it a good pressure and slowly screw that in, but you will have to push pretty hard to get it to go through the plastic. All right. Let's it tight just a little bit more. All right, so you can see now that is secure and not going anywhere. All right guys, so I'm about to jump on the rear and put in the rear mud flaps now. But I wanted to mention, if you guys enjoy this content or simply enjoy the videos, make sure you guys go down and click the like button on this video. You guys have no idea how much that helps out the channel and I really do appreciate it. But like I mentioned, for the rear set, we do have to get the tire off so that we can access the space to install the mud flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the car jacked up use the impact wrench, and I'm gonna go ahead and take the lugs out, take the wheel off, and we'll go ahead and get started. All right guys, so we got the wheel off and we got the car jacked up. Now I'm gonna show you guys where the mud flap would sit. And there's actually etchings on the mud flap so you can make sure that you line it up appropriately. Now, this one in the back is a little bit harder because there's not any guide screws, meaning the two screws that we are putting in are new and we're gonna be drilling straight into the wheel well. There isn't a guide screw like on the front where you're just putting it where there's some existing holes. So I'm gonna show you guys and set the camera up so that you guys can see the inside of the wheel well on the back side and I'll show you guys kind of how we're gonna sit it. All right guys, so like I mentioned, there's some grooving etched in on this mud flap so you can help you line it up on the bumper. So you can see right here is the bottom line which is gonna be the bottom of the bumper and then you've got this line right here which is gonna line up with your curve. Now we're actually lucky that Tommy L. Garage did this because this is gonna save us a lot of time making sure that both sides of the car match and it's gonna help us get the perfect fitment that we want on these. So the way they're gonna sit up here is we're gonna line up the bottom as well as the top. So bring that down to right there. All right, so that's kind of like right where they're gonna be sitting. And it's kind of the perfect fitment. Um, he made it so it's not too far down, but it's also down far enough that you're getting some coverage. And like I said, the hardest part of this is holding this in place to actually put a screw in here. I did try to use a drill on the other side and I found it a little bit harder. So it is best to use a screwdriver, but I, I will warn you, this is a little difficult. So we're gonna jump in, I'm gonna put the camera inside the wheel well so you guys can see me try to put the screws in this and probably struggle. So here we go. All right guys, so you're gonna go into the provided hardware bag and you're gonna get these two screws here. These are the two longer screws out of the bag. And the reason why they're a little bit longer is if you see in here, this is inset back. 
So meaning that the lip right here that you're leaning the mud flap up against is a lot more forward than it is this right here. This is almost inset back, which makes this the hard part because this is curved in a much many different directions and this is a flat piece of plastic. So when you push it up against there, it tends to bend and curve and you really just have to do the best that you can. I'll say the other side really took me a hot minute. So just be patient, work through it and do the best you can because these mud flaps in the end of the day are worth it. So I'm gonna take my screwdriver and one of my screws and I'm gonna do my best to get one of these screws in here. I found that the easier way to do it is to do the top one first. That kind of gets you a line and then you can tip it and tilt it to make sure the fitment is perfect. So for this, my goal is to get the height correct and then we can tip it from there. I'm basically just making a pivot point. So this is gonna take me a minute, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this screwed in and get our first one started. Make sure that when you're doing this, you push really hard and do this as slow as you can because you wanna make sure that all of the threads are going through this liner. All right, so that's about where I want it. I'm gonna hold it right there and I'm gonna try to drive a screw in. Like I said, this is a little bit difficult, but we're gonna do it slowly. Just give it some pressure. A little bit at a time, guys. All right, I got that in a couple turns. I'm gonna check my lines. All right, everything looks good. Next, take my second screw and go ahead and get it ready for the next hole. The best way to do that is I'm gonna go ahead and line it up again. Make sure that left to right, it's in the spot that I want. Okay, which is right there. And I'm gonna slowly push that one in. All right, now that I got it where I want, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up a little bit. Don't strip them, but make sure that they're nice and tight. And when I say tight, I guess I should say more snug. All right, those are in there. They're not going anywhere. And I'll kind of show you guys what it looks like from the backside. All right. So I've got them in there. You see they came out nicely. Now, Tommy L. Garage did mention this little gap right here. You really can't avoid it. You could technically put another longer screw right there, which would in return push that closer to the fender and almost close up that gap just a little bit. I think the gap is fine. Keeping it like this versus the screen right there keeps this side from coming towards the tire. So I think I'm gonna kind of leave it like that because ultimately, it's not going anywhere. It's it's in place and it's very snug. So it's got great fitment. So I'll go ahead and go to the next day where it's a little bit light outside and I'll show you guys what it actually looks like during the day. All right guys, so I had to wait to another day, you know, when it was light out and it wasn't raining so I can actually show you guys what the mud flaps look like now that they're on the car. So I'm gonna quickly get up close so you guys can actually see how well these things fit and how well they blend in with the tire. So first I'm gonna show you guys from the back so you can see the rear mud flap here you really can't hardly see it you know from a distance because it really just blends in with the tire so well i mean when you look at it right here i mean it's hard to even tell that you have you know a mud flap on there and it gives the great protection that keeps all of this back here safe from rocks and debris and it doesn't come up it doesn't come up onto the paint which is why i like these mud flaps i um, mean here you can kind of see the front ones now the front ones do, if you can see, they kind of angle outwards just slightly. Now once I do drop the car down and put some spacers on there, that's gonna be at the perfect curvature that the wheels are gonna be at once the car is lowered. So those will actually blend in a little bit better once the car is taken care of height-wise. I mean, they'll look a little bit more in line with how these on the back look. You can see here on the other side, you know, it just looks so clean and flush. And for the price, you really just can't beat these. They just blend in so well with that tire. And they're so thin and unnoticeable. You hardly even notice that they're on the car unless you're looking for them. 
All right, so those are the Tommy L Garage mud flaps. Now, after installing these, I truly do believe that these are the best mud flaps that you can get for any of these cars. They're so low profile, they give a high level of protection for your rocker panels and for your rear bumper. I absolutely would say that these are a must have if you're trying to protect your paint and the price, you just can't beat them. Now I'm gonna leave Tommy L Garage's information in the description of the video. All you have to do is shoot him an email, tell him what kind of car you have, and he'll give you all the details as far as those mud flaps for your car and what things that you need to provide him so that he can make sure he gets you the right set. So that does sum up today's video. I'll have all the information for these mud flaps as well as all of the tools that I used down in the description below if you wanna take a look at those. Make sure you guys go down and smash that subscribe button and the like button so you guys can subscribe to future content on this as well as help support the channel. As always, I do really appreciate you guys watching my videos and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.